would just check this color green energy. I yeah, yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrea Rossi. That's the inventor. Andrea Rossi. The patent is not clearly written. Mm -hmm. do, you, do, do you think it's the intention? Uh, yes, I'm uh, afraid of. Mm -hmm. They are showing that one district could be supplied with electricity mm. by this device. That's interesting. Mm. Uh, it was a challenge uh, sure. actually for me because I was a thermal engineer who was interested in any kind of energy, nuclear energy especially. So I thought we know everything about energy. There is nothing what we don't know about energy. And I wanted to prove as a young researcher that this kind of so-called uh, bioenergy or whatever doesn't exist. You I was... Wanted to prove it? Yes, I wanted to prove that uh, this uh, kind of pseudo-scientific stuff cannot exist. That we scientists know everything. And then at that time, I used to work in the United States at the Brookhaven National Laboratory. And I had the luck that uh, at Brookhaven we have a big library, medical as well. And I was able to go to New York uh, uh, to visit huge public libraries. So I started to read everything about the paranormal, uh, table, table tipping, table dancing. And I was shocked. Uh, and dismayed that all kind of description about this table dancing from different countries, from different periods, was roughly the same. And it really shocked me. Because if it were all different, it would be just people, crazy people dreaming. But when people are telling always the same story, in Russia, in Norway, in Scotland, in Hungary, in the United States, n n not knowing about each other, but always having the same story, then something must be there, something uh, physics. Uh, so I was really shocked and dismayed that something we scientists don't know. And it was a, a kind of cold shower on me that uh, I was disappointed by our university knowledge. So until then, I was absolutely convinced that we scientists are invisible, in, uh, invincible and we know everything. And since then, I am wiser and know that we scientists don't know anything, <laughs> anything important. So. Uh, nature, mother nature, has lots of secrets still ahead of us. So there is lots of things to learn from nature. So in my opinion, there are two, uh, maybe three possible lines. Uh, the first one, which will have a definite breakthrough, is the so-called cold fusion. And in Italy, some two weeks ago, uh, at the Bologna University, two scientists uh, demonstrated a 15-kilowatt uh, cold fusion machine, which has been in operation uh, in the last two years. They are actually burning nickel powder in hydrogen atmosphere. And they are actually looking for investors to build a factory. So it is only hopefully the matter of months uh, when uh, so-called cold fusion will uh, break the monopoly of oil and, and coal industry. So <clears throat> it will be a real break with the past, uh, a real breakthrough. So this is one possibility. The other is uh, what Velko Milkovic is pursuing um uh, violating the conservation of energy but in my opinion it will not be via mechanical means 
the same principle appears in transient plasma also, mm -hmm. which we have a lab uh, here in, in the other corner of Budapest, but I could uh, show you some pictures about uh, transient uh, plasma waves. Mm -hmm. There also appears a very big uh, <clears throat> uh, fields, and in, in the presence of extremely uh, powerful um, fields, electric fields uh, or magnetic fields, the conservation of energy just breaks down and excess energy could be produced mm -hmm. or if not excess energy, energy could be destroyed. Uh, there is a Hungarian inventor, uh, Professor Leslie Sabo, who uh, actually invested 400 million US dollars uh, to uh, such a project and, and he has uh, huge machines uh, here in, in Budapest but he is unable to make any penny business out of his machines. The trouble is that the excess energy in his machines appears in the form of heat. So you put in mechanical energy, let's say uh, 100 kilowatt and he gets 150 kilowatts, so 50 kilowatt more, but in the form of heat. Of course, from the viewpoint of physics, physics you can get 50 percent more, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. But from business viewpoint, you are losing money because electricity costs more for, uh, for the given amount of energy than, than heat. Heat is cheap, Electricity is expensive, so this is his trouble. His machines are huge. I can show you some pictures about his, his machines. And the third uh, possibility, maybe what we have found, I can uh, show you, that uh, we are able to tap the energy of the vacuum. Yeah, yeah. vacuum. We have a little demonstration machine and it would be not very difficult to mass produce it and it is producing uh, uh, electrical energy uh, without any additional investment. It is uh, very inexpensive, uh, very cheap to mass produce. We need a, li a little uh, small size uh, factory which is able to produce, let's say, wallpapers, and that uh, factory would be able uh, to produce uh, this um, this device, which is tapping the energy of the vacuum. And what are the obstacles? The main obstacles? Uh, to get the first uh, initial funding for for industrial plant, I can show you the device. This is a little lead. Yes. And if, if I push this switch, mm -hmm. you will see a short red uh, mm -hmm. burst. Mm -hmm. And then after 10 seconds, mm -hmm. we can push again and it, it will again uh, flash. And it goes, could go on for millions of years without any fuel. No fuel is needed. So this is, let's say, roughly every 10 seconds. You can push this uh, and you will see the result. Just watch over here when you push. <clears throat> this is the previous. This is actually if you push uh, roughly <clears throat> uh, 30 seconds or so. Mm. And this is a previous generation. It requires uh, three minutes. Yeah. So this is getting better and better and better. But uh, of course, if we could it's have some, <laughs> some, some more money, we could uh, even improve the efficiency. <clears throat> so it's a, uh, it is nothing just two thin, me two thin metal foils and in between a homemade semiconductor. And we make this semiconductor out of uh, household glue. You know what is glue? Yes. Which mm -hmm. sticks together. Yes. But How we add glue? glue, simple, cheap, cheap glue. But we add some material uh -huh. and it takes lots of time and patience to the try testing. 
and we testing to, to, to find different mixtures. And, and to testing, to test it, what have you used? Uh, actually, a very simple, <clears throat> an oscilloscope, and uh, we are watching how the uh, electric potential is regaining, how much time it requires. But uh, just for the sake of, of illustration, I would show you some very simple, ridiculously simple device to show how the physics, which is uh, taught at the uh, secondary mm -hmm. school, is not always true. You always learn that a magnet always attracts a piece of, of iron. Mm -hmm. And it is true, usually. But there is an exception when a magnet actually is repulsing uh, a piece of iron, not attracting, but repelling. Repel repelling. Mm -hmm. And this is the case. When the shape is round. Yes. Then, uh, instead of attracting, it is repulsing. Interesting. And if oh, you move... That's a, what I didn't know, now I understand. Uh, and if you move a little bit further, it is again attracting, but there is a, one special point, one special shape, when it is not true. And we are always looking for these exceptions. So there is always a way around. And uh, of course, this has nothing to do with the violation of energy, just an example that, that one something is considered a common sense, that uh, a magnet is always attracting uh, uh, the iron. It is not always true. There are always some exceptions. And one has to be very, very careful to find the exception. And this is actually the borderline between the conventional science and the inventor. The inventor uh, with uh, one more wheel in the brain is looking for some something something new something useful something exceptional uh, this is one very little exception and here we have found an exception <coughs> when we are able to tap the energy of the vacuum with a very simple device We have demonstrated to several businessmen, nobody gave us money, and of course we cannot ask for a grant for uh, such uh, machines. Looks so simple. So simple, That's but it is beautiful. It is very uh, difficult to find the right ingredients for okay. this for this glue. So uh, <clears throat> we have usually one thousand mistake and one step ahead. So usually it is quite uh, mind-boggling. So it took us fifteen years uh, to develop it, and now we are stuck. For the last two years, we were we have reached our limit. And how have you come up with the correct recipe? How did it appear? <clears throat> uh, the correct recipe has been known for, for a century. You know what is a condenser, uh, industrial yeah. mm -hmm. electrical condenser. Mm -hmm. uh, people who are actually uh, dealing with condenser realized that if an uh, electrical condenser kept uh, on the shelves, after, let's say, one week or one, uh, two weeks, if they, they uh, touch it accidentally, uh, it will uh, um, hit them. So they will be shocked by, by the electrical field. And they realized that somehow they recharge themselves, but they couldn't figure out how they recharge. Therefore, it is well known for decades People who are storing it on the shelf, they keep it uh, with a short circuit, otherwise uh, they will electrocute them. And we have started on this line. Nobody ever bothered about it, and, but we were interested how come that it, it is producing some energy. 
Yes. In, in this book, The Forbidden Invention, I have predicted on the first pages that our weather will be uh, exceptionally unreliable and, uh, and uh, erratic, turbulent uh, within 10 years if we do nothing. We have done nothing and our weather is already turbulent. A couple of years later, in the year 2000, I have written another book about this forbidden technology where I have predicted that there will be an explosion in the price of oil by 2005 and then after within a couple of years there will be an economic meltdown. It happened. Mm. Now I have uh, published a study that by 2012 there will be major uh, upheaval on Earth, uh, something uh, similar which happened in 1968 when there were protests all over in the United States and Europe. Actually by that time uh, we shall run out of oil in such a measure <coughs> that there will be no question that we have to do something. One thing is actually the, the cheapest thing to use natural gas uh, to, uh, uh, <clears throat> to move our cars, for example, or to use alcohol uh, instead of, of, of petrol. But by that year, I think the uh, appearance of, of cold fusion will be uh, apparent for every open-eyed person. So cold fusion within two years will be most probably very well visible that it is possible. So all this uh, absolutely stupid mega project will be ruined like uh, the ITER project in Grenoble where the European taxpayers are, are paying some uh, 10 uh, billion US dollars for this absolutely useless uh, official controlled nuclear f uh, fusion project or Hungary and the Czech taxpayers are also paying uh, 250 million euros for a fast super laser which is completely useless mm -hmm. because people in this winter in this country are dying by the hundreds who are unable to pay their bills they are unable to to heat their home uh, my daughter is actually a medical doctor working with the ambulance and each day they find uh, frozen people on the streets. But it will be an accelerating process and even ordinary people find it more and more difficult to pay the heating bill uh, each year, at least in, in Hungary, not in Austria, not in Finland but here in Hungary, maybe in Slovakia, maybe in, uh, in the Czech Republic also, it is more and more expensive <clears throat> to survive each day for the ordinary people. So something uh, has to be done, otherwise Tunisia will be here in Hungary or, or uh, Slovakia or in the Czech Republic. People will uh, rebel because we are just unable to maintain the old uh, stupid way of, of wasting our, our <clears throat> natural resources. Because in my opinion, oil should be kept in the earth because oil <clears throat> should be used as a chemical resource for future generations as well. So for our grandsons, uh, our grand-grandsons, because they will need the oil as a lubricant, uh, as a material for plastics or whatever. Burn oil, which have been accumulated by hundreds of million years, by one or two generations is utterly irresponsible. Uh, especially when Mother Nature provides us uh, exceptionally good methods. Very few people are aware that this controlled nuclear fusion 
happens in our body. I can show you a, a Russian textbook is here with me. So actually, contour, controlled nuclear fusion is an essential part of life, not only for human life, single cell uh, beings or, or let's say plant uh, or animals are using controlled nuclear fusion. It's a very important part of, of our life processes. We can ignore it, yet it happens, for example. I had a friend who was a little bit crazy, but after a two week long, very strong meditation, he was able to give up food altogether. He never ate food, just drank some water. But there are some people who doesn't need to drink water at all. But it requires each day very heavy meditation, each day two, three hours in order to maintain that kind of mental, strange mental condition where you don't need food at all, where you get your energy because you are dissipating heat, of course. It's a controlled fusion. So one shouldn't be so scared of controlled uh, nuclear fusion. It's part of our life. Without it, we'd, we, we would be dead. So you mean that mind, our mind, standpoint is a big part of it as well? Yes. Of course, our mind is uh, controlling that kind of very strange oscillations, vibrations, where uh, this uh, energy producing uh, fusion process starts. So it's a, a kind of oscillations. We find it in our experiments also, that oscillations kind of music uh, is very important. So it is contagious, it can spread. Yes, yes. So it is very interesting to, to read. Maybe I can bring you the book to, to show you, written by two Russian researcher and a former book by a French uh, physician uh, who has also found uh, that uh, hands, uh, uh, for example, are producing calcium uh, when they are laying their eggs. Uh, yes, they, yeah, are, yeah. they are not given calcium in that amount, yet they are uh, producing... Kerbrain. Yes, yeah. Ker Louis Kerbrain. Yeah, Kerbrain. So I should ask you, how long have you been working on, on this device? In this form, actual form? Uh, actually, for the first five years I was working with liquid form, just in order to to learn about the science uh, uh, the, uh, part of it. I wanted to know whether is it a force field or whether is it simply the wind or the heat because uh, I, am a, I was a professional uh, researcher on the field of fluid mechanics. I wanted to be absolutely sure that this is not kind of a strange side effect. And it took me five years in order to find out that really this is something strange, new effect produced in biology. So this is not a, a, a wind effect or the effect of the heat uh, mm -hmm. of the palm and so on. It took five years and then after it took another five years when I have learned the effect uh, to form it into a mass producible engineering uh, uh, practical device. So altogether it took me five years, but of course it took two years to raise the, the necessary capital to mass produce the, the plastic uh, form, because it requires uh, special tools for, for, the, the, for the plastic and uh, mm -hmm. This was uh, the, the cheapest and very simple solution as a toy, uh, just as a toy to show everybody, yes, you have a power of the mind mm -hmm. and you are able uh, to destroy your health or you are able to improve your health. The choice is yours. It's a personal uh, device which helps you to live longer, to live healthier. Do you use it? Yes, sure. Sure, but no, I have already a feeling, mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, that's. I think that's 
that's the greatest thing that you it teaches you to develop the feeling of it yes uh, and for example when i am sitting on the tram or on the bus i have the feeling that somebody is sitting behind me who has lots of energy mm -hmm. and the other person near to me is sucking my energy mm -hmm. so because I, I worked for, for quite a long time with people, uh, natural healers with mm -hmm. laying on the hands and so on, I have this uh, ability to be able to distinguish people with lots of excess energy or just energy vampires who are mm -hmm. sucking other people's mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting. So, uh, ordinary lay people were really true that this sort of energy really does exist and it is very important when you are a mother is raising young kids mm -hmm. uh, to give this energy to the little baby actually most of the energy the little baby is is uh, getting from the mother is this kind of energy can I ask one thing sure I <coughs> because I was since long interested in natural regeneration of water and that's why I, I learned about Chai Becker and, and I have bought recently uh, a little device by Johann Kander in, in Austria, Johann Kander and it should restructure water molecules and uh, whenever you give it into the uh, vicinity of other liquid it should change the structure, water structure of, of other liquid. And so I thought if I keep it in my hand, uh, that should turn faster, should it? Maybe, but this is the device uh, good for testing such claims, whether is it true uh -huh. or not. Because this device is just a simple stupid device. It has no uh, prejudgment and if such a device is working fine, if it is just a fairy tale, it will show the effect. So simple. Uh, for example, uh, how much vitamin should you personally take? The device will tell you, not, mm -hmm. not going to the pharmacy, that how much vitamin mm -hmm. I personally, because all the persons are, are different. There are no two exactly uh, similar person, so I learned that how much vitamin C I have to take, maybe twice the official, maybe ten times. Uh, I'm always, always uh, to able to measure the final results, the vitality level. Our survival uh, is really depends on the open-minded people and not on the closed-minded people. Yeah, I think that it's good because you are the mind opener and then the minds may open because they can see that has been done, it is real. But of course I'm the black sheep and I am <clears throat> under official surveillance and uh, I'm able, unable to talk uh, over official media, only I can write uh, some is the books. And that's it. Uh, and I can get some, some meager funds for research. Okay. These are a, a number of very strange, very interesting test results. And they are showing how a mass a spectrometer is working. And they were able to show different isotopes uh, appear uh, in, in biological systems. So for example, iron appears magnesium appears, calcium appears, so we are able to synthesize and the reason that we have to eat uh, uh, micro elements, uh, small trace elements is needed because the, it is, the fusion process requires it. If you don't have enough in, in your uh, body, this uh, energy producing fusion process is uh, getting slower or stops altogether and we die. This is the reason we have to eat some rare materials like erbium or indium or, mm -hmm. or something like this because it's a cascade. Mm -hmm. And if you want to climb down, 
you need each uh, step. If uh, one step is missing, you are unable to move on. So this so is these for the... And, and these, uh, these uh, traces, elements are found in, in life products, in, in vegetables? In a healthy soil, yes. Mm -hmm. But if you are mm -hmm. burning out and you are taking out all these trace elements, then we are in trouble. And the industrial agriculture took away several decades yeah. ago. They have just uh, uh, used it up and <clears throat> they never put it back. And this is the reason now that we have to eat. People who are living in urban areas and we are no longer using cows or horses, no manure, there is no uh, no, no return, no circulation of elements, but it is completely artificial. So therefore, in order to survive, we have to eat artificially those rare elements. And this is the reason, the fusion process, which has to be maintained. It's quite strange. So this is a very fascinating book, of course. I liked it very much enjoyed it, but we are doing it in, in our lab, this kind of process, so we are able, uh, we are able to do it. Metals are, are especially important. Here are all the process with uh, different uh, trace elements like uh, yttrium, ytterbium, uh, Dysprosium, uh, palladium, tellur, zirconium, uh, all these uh, processes uh, are using these trace elements. It's very interesting to see so in this. Fact, in healthy soil, there is healthy digestion of microorganisms and those Ab things as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. Then it comes to a human body too. One shouldn't go, shouldn't think that maybe cesium is necessary, but yes, it is necessary. Cesium, European, Europium, a uh, small amount, but still it is necessary. For example, if you smoke, after smoking, after two minutes of smoking, uh, the rotation will usually stop, or if you are eating too heavy stuff which you don't like, mm -hmm. too much fat, mm -hmm. you make drowsy, sleepy, it, it uh, stops. But uh, if you drink some coffee, it is better. Uh, if you walk uh, outside in fresh air, you return, it's much better. It, it shows that life has more tricks Mm. Uh, than, than ordinary people would, would think. And does it turn when it's under? No, under no, mm. because this is like a Faraday cage. Mm -hmm. In this condition, the energy is flowing through the lid. It doesn't go into the mm -hmm. wheel. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's a problem, but this is the way life works. Yeah, yeah. And when it's close to the computer, does it turn? For example, sometimes I have a <coughs> compass, and when I put it over my notebook, laptop, it, it turns. It turns, because due to the magnetic fields, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, this doesn't react to the magnetic field. No, no, it has nothing to do with magnetism. The first 1000 uh, tests I have done in a glass box, so people could put their hand into the glass box and move water. The first uh, thousands of experiments mm -hmm. were just simply a petri dish, a flat mm -hmm. uh, dish filled with water, and they were moving water. All people are different, uh, mm -hmm. so you have, really, you have to experiment with yourself whether do I need this vitamin or this mixture or, or that kind of, of vitamin with trace elements is better for mm -hmm. me. But you are able really to find for yourself uh, really the, the best solution. Nobody will be able to tell you that this is uh, perfect for you because nobody has analyzed the structure of your body, how much vitamin you have at that moment. 
I was in Thailand and Indonesia now and I had eaten lots of fresh fruit. So my body is filled for the next uh, one or two months. But after two months, uh, all these accumulated vitamins uh, will go out and I have nothing but uh, cabbage and, and apples here because there is... Well, that's no, a good thing because it's cold here. Yeah, the, the fruits will open you up. Here you need to be cold because it's cold. Uh, I like fruits mm. because I don't eat too much uh, meat or, or not at all. So I have to look after my, my vitamin uh, level. And this device is good because it tells you that is it good you have made an overdose or, or you have to take more vitamins than, than necessary. So it's a, a <clears throat> I, I call it a personal uh, compass for your health. And if you buy one then all... all I would love to buy it. No, I can give you as a gift. Uh, no, just no, I, a, I, I would buy it from you. No, no. Uh, take it as a uh, gift from me. It's very simple. Thank you, very much. you can. Thank you very much because I. And would you would you sign it's it? It's been for original. For Diana. Yes. Sure. Oh, thank you.